When preparing an agarose gel, you'll need to both weigh out the appropriate amount of agarose and pour out the appropriate volume of buffer solution, which will vary depending on the size and agarose concentration of the gel. Combine the agarose and buffer solution and mix them to make sure that no large lumps of agarose powder are stuck to the container. The next step is to heat the agarose and buffer mixture in a microwave oven until the agarose is completely dissolved. Make sure the container holding the gel mixture is large enough to allow for the solution to boil up without coming out of the container. A loose cover should be placed over the top to prevent the solution from splashing out. It's very important that this cover be loose, otherwise dangerous pressure buildup can occur within the container. You should mix the gel solution at intervals during heating, but be sure you wear safety gloves. The solution can become superheated, and when you mix it, the liquid can suddenly boil up. The agarose is only fully dissolved when it's completely clear. If you don't completely dissolve the agarose, your finished gel will have regions of different concentrations, and your nucleic acid samples will not separate correctly. Once the agarose is fully dissolved, let it cool to 60 degrees Celsius. This prevents heat damage to the gel tray while keeping the agarose liquid. Once the agarose is cooled, you'll need to add a dye to the molten gel for later visualization of the size separated nucleic acid fragments. You can use cyber green, but the best and most commonly used dye is ethidium bromide. When using ethidium bromide, you should always wear gloves, since it's a mutagen and a possible carcinogen that can be both absorbed through the skin and breathed in. Immediately after handling ethidium bromide, change your gloves to avoid contaminating other instruments or parts of the lab. Gel trays have two open ends that need to be sealed while the gel is solidifying. This is easily achieved using masking tape. Take a piece of masking tape that's a few centimetres longer than the open end of the gel tray and fold over one end of the tape to make it easier to remove later. Place the tape around the end of the gel tray, overlapping both sides of the tray, and make sure it's firmly stuck along the entire end. Do the same for the remaining open end. Before pouring your gel, you need to make sure the gel tray is on a horizontal surface so the gel will be of uniform thickness. You also need to insert a comb into the gel tray. The comb will create cavities called wells. It's into these wells that you'll be pipetting your nucleic acid samples. Once you've made sure that the gel tray is level and you've inserted the comb, slowly pour the gel solution into the gel tray. Using a disposable pipette tip, move any air bubbles to the edge of the gel. It's especially important to remove bubbles from around the comb since these can affect the shape of the wells. It takes about 20 minutes for the gel to solidify, during which it will change from colourless to slightly opaque. While the gel is setting, don't move the gel tray or disturb the gel itself, since this can create a gel of non-uniform thickness. Once the gel is set, you can remove the comb. Slowly and carefully pull the comb upwards vertically. You'll feel some resistance as the comb comes out of the gel. Then remove the masking tape from the ends of the gel tray. Next, it's time to place the gel into the gel tank. The gel tank is a box with an electrode wire running across the bottom of each end. This allows the current to pass, which will separate the nucleic acid fragments. 
Put the gel on the platform in the gel tank in the correct orientation. Remember that nucleic acids are negatively charged, so they'll run through the gel towards the positive electrode. The connector to the positive electrode is coloured red, and the connector to the negative electrode is coloured black. Add buffer solution to the reservoirs at each end of the gel tank. Keep adding buffer until the liquid is about 2 mm above the surface of the wells in the gel. This will make the gel easier to load and ensure the appropriate current runs through the gel. You'll be able to see the wells more easily during loading if the gel tank is on a dark background.